This video is brought to you by Brilliant. It's worth starting this video with a small confession. Over the last year and a bit, I've started many of my UK videos by stating that it seems almost certain that Labour will win the next UK general election. Now, in my defence, I'm not the only one who thinks this. This is something that the UK press seem to be in agreement on. The Tories have been in power for 13 years now, and they've been behind Labour in the polls for more than two years. Labour lead the Tories on all three of the most important issues to the public, and the public believe that Labour will form the next government. It appears obvious that this time next year, Keir Starmer will occupy number 10. How embarrassing then it would be for all of us if the polls turned out to be wrong, and Sunak actually won the next election. The question that very few people are asking though is, could this happen? Could the polls actually be spectacularly wrong? And could Sunak be in power for at least another five years? Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. Now, we're going to split this video into three parts. In the first, we're going to have a look at how reliable the polls have been, noting specific examples both in the UK and abroad of when they've been wrong. In the second part, we'll explain why this is, and in the third part, we'll have a look at whether the polls could be wrong about the 2024 general election. Now, we don't actually have to go all that far back in the UK to find examples of the polls being wrong. The reason Theresa May called the 2017 general election was because she was ahead in the polls, and she believed that in calling an election, she could increase her majority, giving her enough MPs to finally break the Brexit impasse. On the surface, this seemed reasonable. On April the 18th, 2017, when May first announced she'd be seeking a general election, the Tories were about 20 points ahead in the polls. That's roughly the lead that Labour have over the Tories right now. The same Labour Party that journalists are certain are going to win a huge majority at the next election. As time went on though, the polls began to narrow. The final result was a Tory minority government, with 13 fewer seats than in 2015, and a working majority over the Labour Party of only 17 seats. Even in more recent years, we've seen a number of international elections in which the polls predicted one thing, and something completely else happened. In 2019 in Australia, the polls put the Labour Party at about a 10-point lead for almost two years leading up to the election. In the end, it was the Liberal Party that won the election, with a 77-seat majority for the Liberal National Coalition. The apparent sudden switch of attitudes by voters has resulted in the election results being referred to as a miracle. Similarly, in Germany in 2021, the polls predicted that Angela Merkel's Christian Democrats, or CDU, had a huge 24-point lead over their opponents, the Social Democrats, or SPD. In the election itself, though, the SPD, under Olaf Scholz, became the largest party, albeit by a very narrow margin. This election became another example of the polls saying that one party was storming ahead and the final election results proving something completely different. So while many of us rely on polls to give us an indication of what will happen in the upcoming elections, and we treat them as if they're a deeply reliable indicator, there are recent examples of why this hasn't been the case. So why can the polls be wrong? Well, it's worth first understanding what polls are. They're an indication of what voters want at only the moment in which they're conducted. Sure, they're an indication of how people will go on to vote in the election, but when little effort is put into emphasising that they're only an indication, people can assume that they have more predictive power than they actually do. This can lead people to claim that the polls are wrong, when actually voter attitudes have simply shifted in an election campaign, or voters thought that they wanted one party, and on election day, when the moment actually arises, they realise they want something else. A Lord Ashcroft poll from the 2015 UK general election showed that as many as 11% of voters actually only made their mind up of who to vote for on election day itself. This highlights exactly what a poll is able to show. There's no way for polls to account for these people, and this likely accounted for some of the gap between what the polls predicted and what actually happened on election day. Nonetheless though, even if some of the blame can be put on a misinterpretation of what polls actually show, the examples we listed earlier are too egregious to simply be explained away by this alone. 
Sometimes the polls are just wrong due to methodological reasons. Getting the samples right in election polls is incredibly important, as if certain groups are underrepresented or overrepresented, it could skew the findings of the poll. It's argued that this is what happened back in 2015, when pollsters underrepresented older people, specifically those aged over 75. This age group is more likely to vote Tory, and as a result the polls predicted a lower Tory vote share than was actually achieved. Even if, though, pollsters can keep on top of these methodological errors, polls can still be wrong thanks to other human factors. What we mean by this is that pollsters can often face reputational damage if they incorrectly predict an election. If a pollster has a finding that goes against the grain, they can feel a certain pressure to tweak it so that they don't stand out, and this can be to the detriment to the overall accuracy of polling. All in all, polls can be wrong for three reasons then. A misunderstanding of what they can be used for, methodological errors, and just plain human errors. So onto the last part of this video. Could the polls be wrong about the 2024 UK general election? Now, historically speaking, the polls have been less successful at predicting the Labour vote share rather than the Tory one. Writing for the LSE blog, Professor Paul Whitterly has used election polls and actual election results from 1945 to 2019 to produce a correlation at different time intervals before an election. Now, this research shows that Labour polling correlates less strongly than Conservative polling with election results, meaning that Labour voting is more volatile and more tricky to predict. Now, the implication here is that the strong Labour lead shown in election polls might not be as strong as it currently seems. It all depends on how accurate the polls turn out to be and whether people's support for them actually holds. As we explained, there are many reasons that polls can be wrong, and it's hard to predict when they will be. We'll just have to keep an eye on the trends and see what ends up happening when the election is held. As we step into 2024, many of us are contemplating our New Year's resolutions, always looking to improve ourselves and learn more about the world around us. And while our content is always a good starting point, a lot of stuff we talk about can seem pretty complicated, especially when we dive into analytics and detailed data. But luckily there's a fun and easy way to learn more, which also doesn't cost thousands of dollars or take years and years of schooling. That's because Brilliant is the best way to learn maths, data science and computer science interactively. And the good thing is, it doesn't take long to learn either. These complex topics are broken down into small but accessible chunks, designed around your busy schedule. Even just a few minutes a day can help you with accumulating new knowledge over time in a fun and engaging way. As time goes on, you'll also get used to that empowering feeling of learning too, because Brilliant isn't just about memorization and lectures. Brilliant teaches you by doing, using active learning techniques to teach you the principles behind otherwise quite complex subjects, and ensuring you actually understand what's going on. So whether you want to brush up on your basic math skills, improve your employment prospects, or just have another New Year's resolution for 2024, you can check out everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days by going to brilliant.org forward slash TLDR. Plus the first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Thanks for your support.